Good afternoon. My name is Dan Lukash. I'm a senior program officer with, whoa, there's the bell. <laughs> Ready to go. With the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Uh, I'm glad to be here. A couple notes I made before I get into my presentation, just listening to the projects, listening to some of the projects and the activities and the themes that people were talking about. We, I think it ties in very well with many of the activities that we do uh, at IMLS. Uh, a couple people mentioned talking about Museums have stuff and they want content, trying to match content and, act, and have people have access to that. Um, I'll move forward here. Connect people to information ideas, that's our sort of our new mission statement. And I'll just mention a couple of projects we're doing that. We're working with the Minneapolis Institute of Art and the Walker Art Center. They have a very popular website called Arts Connected. And we've just funded that website to do two primary things. One, make it open source so everybody can get to it. And then one of the things that in their focus group was education and teachers. Teachers loved having the resources, but they wanted to manage the resources themselves. They wanted to take this painting and maybe this uh, video conversation of the artist about that painting and these paintings and create their own lessons plans to meet their, own, their state standards, where a lot of times museums were creating, putting the content up and then creating the lesson plan and curriculum for them. So this Art Connected website we're funding so teachers can gather their own resources. And I think that ties in with a lot of what we've heard here. Also, I think our friends at Michigan State have a current project with some video conferencing. I don't know if it's out of your office or in another office. Video conferencing with schools connecting how students can learn through video conferencing. And I think that ties in very nicely. Another project we're doing is uh, down at George Mason in their new, me new media center. Uh, they've take, they've working with the Smithsonian. And they've taken six objects of national prominence. Uh, for example, Thomas Jefferson's desk, the shorthand of Ho for Cesar Chavez, and uh, the lunch counter at Woolworths are three of the first three coming out. And they've created a lesson plan around those particular objects and then have created information and text so local historic sites can log in, use that national object, and then create a website and a lesson plan. And they give them the instructions to do that and incorporate that national object with their local history. And then they're also doing online, I think through both uh, website transmission and video conferencing, with uh, specific historians from the Smithsonian talking about those particular objects. And then the historic societies are able to create their own lesson plans with the local schools that tie into their local history. So I think those are some projects and some areas where we're interested in. So I think for IMLS is really on the same wavelength of everybody here of trying to get that access. Trying to, the digital, digital divide is not just who has computers and who doesn't have computers, it's the type of access and the ability to use that. And I think all these projects sort of tie that in, and that's what everyone's talking about here in this particular conference, of trying to tie all that information together. So everybody in the 122,000 libraries and who use the 17,000, 500,000 museums, if you believe all those numbers to be accurate, uh, occur. And we do grant making, <coughs> convening research. Our primary eligible applicants are museums, libraries and on certain programs institutes of higher education are eligible to apply and I'll touch on that in a minute. I've provided a list of all our programs but I'm just going to focus on one program for museums uh, which is our Museums for America. Only museums are eligible for this program but the goal of this program is to fund something that's specific to that institution's strategic plan or long-range goal. A lot of times it is these digital video type projects so here's an opportunity to you want to work with the museum, engage them, remind them of this Museums for America program and that can provide some funding for that. Unfortunately, the cap for that is $150,000 with a one-to-one -one match. We do have a conservation program where institutions, museums, again, can apply to do conservation work if it's a priority within their institution and that certainly includes all the digital activities that we've been talking about. The key project and the projects I talked about in the beginning here all came from our National Leadership Grant Program. Both museums and libraries are eligible for this program. Uh, in total, there's around $21, 22000000 million available for this program. Both museums and libraries are eligible, and this is the key program also that institutes of uh, higher education are eligible to apply for and receive funding. Grants in this program are up to $1 million. Generally, if your request is over $250,000, there's a one-to-one -one match except for research projects, we don't require match. So all that's a little complicated, I won't get into that right now. We do, as you can see on the screen, there are four particular categories, and certainly many of the projects we talked about here can apply to multiple categories. Building digital resources, 
isn't so much putting stuff online or creating the resources. It's sort of, all right, I have all this stuff up. I have all this stuff available. What do I do with it? How can I make best use of it? And that's where this partnerships and these other activities come on. For example, the George Mason project I talked about and the video housing project in Michigan State are all building digital resource categories. So they already have this stuff, but they're trying to find better ways that people can access it and have more uses for more types of people. Uh, in the third category, research and demonstration, that's certainly one of the key categories where we could see some of these partnerships of where, uh, for example, the, the center here at Columbia is interested in some of the preservation, some of the collaborations. You can partner with libraries and partner with museums, and see how you can get some commonalities for preservation activities or the interoperability of different systems can come together. And we've just started this first year collaborative planning grants. Since these are million dollar grants oftentimes or multiple hundreds of thousands, sometimes it, you need some resources to put together a competitive application to do some of the basic work of assessing the need and determining what the national impact is. So we do have collaborative planning grants and those for, are for $30,000. I know I'm running through this quick, but I just want these to get this all in the back of your mind and hopefully you'll come back and look it up when you have an idea. Library, I provide a list of programs here. Let me go back to the state library agencies. Part of the funding at IMLS is block grants to the states to the state library agencies. And then each state gets an X amount of dollars primarily based on population through a formula funding. And then the state library associations make the determination how that money goes out. But many of the state library associations do areas in preservation, do areas in video, do areas in partnership for the library. So again, it's another opportunity to think of when you're thinking of projects and want to partner with other people that this is an opportunity to receive some funding. We go through grants.gov just like NEH does, so I need to remind you of that particular procedure which can be entertaining at times. <laughs> One thing we are, our director is particularly interested in conservation. Uh, the primary focus is uh, objects at this point, but certainly the Born Digital has a key. Uh, in that first bullet, I want to remind people to go to Heritage Preservation. We funded, I think, with NEH and any also provided, the Heritage, Heritage Health Index, which talked about some of the dire straits some of our collections are in and that digital activities were certainly included in that. And so in response to that, IMLS is, is doing a connecting to collections, a call to action. Uh, we're having a summit at the end of June. Uh, the invitees have already been determined. We're inviting museum and library personnel and funding them to come to representatives from each state as well as particular scholars and advocates in those particular fields. But the important thing is we're also doing four regional forums across the country uh, within the next two years after that. That will touch on a variety of topics that will be one in response to the issues that come up at the forum at the initial National Conservation Summit then also be regionally directed uh, topics that are relevant to those particular areas. So again, there's an area where we certainly expect, certainly at the regional summits, regional forums to talk more about the preservation of digital activities. And we're also going to provide statewide planning grants so individual states can do some planning for activities they'd like to do in the conservation area. So again, that's a, all these, uh, you hear a lot about the content being created at this meeting, all the, all the um, great media that's being developed. But at one point, there's a little touch on, well, we have sort of the two-inch tapes, we have the DVDs, what's it going to be next, and how do we save it, and how do we then, it all gets back to access, how is everybody going to access this information, maybe next year, two years from now, or how do you get to that information from three or four years ago? I think we heard about it in the, uh, both the public broadcasting archive projects and certainly the British archive <coughs> projects of accessing that old technology, is in the best word, but that's more difficult. The other thing I want to call your attention to is a free conference. It's actually very much like this. We call it WebWise, where museums and libraries come together. And a lot of it is best practices. We have sessions where you hear what's going on, hear what projects are going. And we also try and have some key speakers uh, to talk about what's going on in the digital and technology worlds of both museums and libraries. Uh, it's a free conference. It's uh, first come, first serve, up to 350 people. This year, we filled it in two weeks. Uh, it is generally held in end of February, early March. Uh, this one, it was in D.C. this past year. Next year, it will be out of D.C. We are currently uh, have an RFP out to fill that. But uh, keep track of that. I think many of you would find that very interesting. Which leaves me, how do you keep track of stuff at IMLS? One way is we have an email newsletter called Primary Source. It comes out monthly, tracks our grant programs, highlights projects highlights issues at IMLS that we're touching on, and also informs you of conferences. 
and the like. I have my contact information. I have my web address there. Back at the table, uh, right where your guards, I have a co where you got your uh, badges and folders. I have a copy of the slides. If you want to pick those up, uh, there's a little brochure about our 2008 programs. If you're tired of, of uh, trying to look stuff up, you can have this, the printed versions. And our website's very easy, imls.gov. Thank you very much.